Gary Wine is our guest, Deputy County Administrator and IT Director for Berkeley County. Gary, good morning. Thanks for coming in. Good morning. Thank you for the invitation. Absolutely. You know, uh, that Alan Davis guy is retiring. I'm not sure if he told you that or not. He, uh, <laughs> he told us. I think everyone in the organization has tried to convince him to, to uh, take it back, but he's not hearing it. He, the, the light's at the end of the tunnel now. Has he had his knee surgery? He, it, he has. Well, one, uh, and it was so much fun, he's having another one in a couple weeks. So he hasn't had the second one no, yet? No, he has right? not. Okay, very good. Hey, uh, obviously, that would mean a position would be open. You would appear to be the guy next in line. I know there are interview processes and whatever, but are you interested in that position? So uh, it is not a direct step. Uh, the county council has it on the street, so it's open to everybody that might want to work for a great organization. Mm-hmm. Very nice, yeah. You, I, I, I got that nervous hand. I give that signal to all of our guests who do the thumb because it, <laughs> it goes right up into the microphone. Uh, hey, let's talk uh, IT security here for a moment because we've had two pretty large profile hacks in the last couple of weeks. Washington County was part of that. Berkeley County has been part of that, too. And obviously, nobody wants that to be their headline. And I know you're limited in what you can comment on or or whatever, but... In both cases, I'm told by uh, the, the populace that it's it's been ransomware, and that frightens everybody. Because best I can tell, you can't find these guys, and your options are pay or just buy a new system and reinstall everything and hope you got everything saved somewhere. Right. So you mentioned Berkeley County. You realize that's not Berkeley County Council that was compromised, just right. for the record. Schools. Not us. Schools. Right. Well, whoever it was, it wasn't Berkeley County Council. Uh, and at this stage of the game and at this point in technology, it's not a matter of uh, if you get hacked, if you become compromised. It's when and how do you mitigate from that point and recover, right? So. It, it is a uh, – the folks that live that life in our organization, um, they don't like to see or hear this stuff. And when I say, hey, I'm going to go talk on the radio, I think they all went home. They're like, it's just too much for me. Um, <laughs> drawing attention. You know, we, right. Uh, that's, a con- that's a concern. Sure. It is. So for anybody uh, that is a, has a network, right, if you and your laptop or you and your iPad, you're great. It's okay. But the second you connect that somewhere – and information can be shared accordingly, it becomes just an open opportunity to see. You know, for every one or two support staff, there's countries that base their entire effort on creating havoc, right? And sometimes it's for fun, sometimes it's for money, uh, and other time I think it's just for the rush of, look what we did. So it's it's scary. What are your options if that happens to you? Is it pretty much pay or there's nothing else you can do? Well, Crypto lockers, right? So when in an organization where computers are connected and those computers share information, if one human, one user makes the mistake and runs up and they have the authority to run the program, right? And its effort is to go out and touch every file you have access to and lock it down, it's gone. So your options are pay and hope that you have the opportunity to unlock it. Pay, they keep your money and walk on. Or as you said earlier, just throw it out and start over. Remember, we're custodians of historical records. We're custodians of documents that are hundreds of years old that are now digitized. There's really no recover if something like that happens to those records. I'm not a tech guy. You probably didn't know that until I made that statement. Um, could have guessed. But, could have guessed, Rob. Now, I know an, <laughs> another host is here often, and he's a tech wizard if he hasn't admitted to it. Who's that? The Admiral. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I was explaining to the Admiral how to enlarge the screen on his phone so I could read the document I sent him yesterday. Shoot, I missed that one. I could use that also. He was asking me how to do a collect call on his cell phone. Uh, <laughs> now, Joe, I'm Joe, sorry, Joe, Bill. Don't share my secret, Joe. Uh, but um, why is it so difficult with, all, with the smartest tech people as there are out there why is it so difficult to free up a system once this has been locked down? If someone can do something, there should be something you can do to counter it. Well, there's there's always that someone smarter. I think that goes in every profession. There's always somebody a step ahead. So in the world of today, when you talk about connectivity, um, and, and I'm an old guy, right? So I remember the days when you used to back stuff up on tapes, floppies, sure. and you'd take those out and stick them in a the drawer. Well, those things weren't spinning, so in theory they were safe, right? And then the world evolved and everything was spinning disks, so we, we took our data 
and we backed it up to another spinning disk and it lived there spinning and if we wanted to go get something that someone accidentally deleted the IT people look like heroes because what used to take days was done in a matter of seconds. Well, then they realized, whoa, if our real stuff is here spinning and then our backup is spinning, well, guess what? The bad guys can get to our real stuff, then they can affect our backup stuff. We're back to the days, and it's called air gap, where you actually have tapes that back stuff up that you take out and go put in a safe right? Mm -hmm. Now the bad guys are so good that they implant this stuff in the air gap backup. So when the next time it spins, poof. so it is an ongoing effort to protect any information. Can I ask a, a just a really dumb question? Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I'm, I'm an insurance agent. I own an insurance agency and a lot of my younger agents make fun of me because a lot of times I, I do stuff on paper. Should we just print everything out and stick it in a warehouse? I mean, did, is it just go full circle and, and just have it all? I mean, I don't think the Russians or anyone else can hack into a, a warehouse full of paper. Right. Yeah, it's that f something physical that can't be touched has its benefits for sure, right? And you talk about historical documents, pieces of paper that are hundreds of years old. Even though we still have the copy, you know, we digitize it, and everybody thinks, you know, the way of the future, you make it digital and there it is. Well... We're, you're seeing in today, 2023, where that cannot be the case in some instances. It's accessible. It can be compromised. Joe, is Gary, is cloud storage the answer in terms of getting your data information out of your system, stored right. somewhere, so that if you are attacked by ransomware, you can basically come in with a new software system, reboot, and then recall all that data from the cloud. Right. So that's that's a that's an opportunity. I mean, that's one of the protocols, like an organization of our own. We do that, um, and that's that inaccessible information, right? And then you have to have concerns of what policies and protocols are in place to protect that storage, right? Because right. it it lives somewhere, probably spinning. Right. That um, we, we've seen the big players raise their hands and say, hey, PayPal, your information got compromised. Well, that may be my credit card. I call the bank, cancel the credit card yeah. picture, you know, records of employees or historical documents or whatever may be laying out there. So back to the network thing. Right. If your computer's connected to another one, there's always an opportunity for something bad to happen. And. A lot of times it starts with the, any security guy, if you're a girl, pardon me, if you ask them, the one thing they could eliminate, they're going to tell you email. <laughs> it's the worst of yeah, all worst. Yeah. That's how it That's happens. That's a gateway for a lot of A this. lot. A lot of that. I mean, one click. Um, in, my dad did it a couple of decades ago, compromise, or a decade ago, compromised his entire existence with a click on the computer, popped up and said, hey, this is Microsoft. We want to help. 20 minutes later, Date of birth, address, social security number, yeah. gone. Yeah, I, when when we in our law firm uh, set up our firewall system, our IT people who came down to do all this for us because we didn't know what we we're doing, uh, they showed us how our system, just in our little law firm here in Martinsburg, was being attacked thousands of right. times a day. Oh yeah, just repeatedly, people trying to gain access Shh. to our information, and we're no different than you yeah. all. Right? We we have confidential information, client right. information. We got to keep that. Safe. Obviously, sacrosanct, and and right. here they are, people trying to access this, and and we could have easily been subject to a ransomware attack, and faced with that prospect, pay right. or, you know, like you said, re do a total reboot. That's right. It's tough. Gary Wine is our guest, deputy county administrator and IT director. You had told us in the previous appearance how many times a day, Berkeley County's sites are attempted to be. It's over right. a million. Oh my goodness! Wow. They, they just bang at it. It never yeah. stops. And if you if you could also see the amount of invasive emails that are turned at the firewall level that don't get delivered, so we've gotten to the point now uh, where where we geofence and we won't even let emails come from certain countries, certain areas, and it causes problems because in the world and you mentioned cloud computing, I mean you could have a Google with a, a cluster of servers in Bulgaria, I mean. It, you know, cheaper running over there. So you send an email, it's really coming from over there and here we're blocking it. So that's a challenge too, but we just, again, we, we deal with it as it happens. We'd much rather say no and then allow it. But the bad guys can sit in another country and run their computer in a cluster that's in New York City. So they may be overseas, but we're seeing the information come from New York. So it, it is a, it's a shell game 
all the time. You mentioned email is the most dangerous and the easiest portal for entry into a computer, and that's obviously you click on a link you think is going to take you to something, <laughs> and it's a fake link, and next thing you know, you're in lockdown there. Uh, otherwise, though, if I'm just sitting here right now, I've got a browser open, and I'm reading a story on the Metro News website. Mm-hmm. Is there danger to my com- – can someone get in that way if all, all I'm doing is clicking on stories and reading? No is not a word ever used. There's always opportunity. Uh, there there are scripts and stuff that can be initiated from inside of a browser. Uh, com- a website gets compromised. They may not shut it down. They may put redirects on links on that web page to turn you. I mean, you think, ah, Metro News, this is great. I'll click here and read the story about – you know, a new law firm in Martinsburg, it didn't go there. It took you somewhere else. Those are some of the sneaky things they do. So it, it is dangerous. You really have to be on your A game when you're on the Internet, on a computer. Uh, antivirus, firewall, just user education of what to do and what not to do. You know, I got an email from Alan Davis yesterday. He needed some money. He was at Target. Uh, asked me if I could just <laughs> oh, yeah. send him. Yeah, it, Alan Davis, you know, looked to me. But really cool, his new email address was LustyLisa at Hotmail.com or something. So. He, he told me that well, he was switching to that email address last time he was here. He, he kind of liked the sound of it. So. The retirement email address. That is well, it. Lusty the, the, Lisa. The dress he was wearing gave it away. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. Lusty Lisa, that's beautiful. So uh, is, is the virus in the opening of the email or click on this link to send me money in, in terms yeah, of that? That's how it starts, right? So Which phishing, one? I gave you two choices. Uh, well, the link in the email obviously to install a virus typically is download, take something from the email, from the browser, put it on your computer, and then run it. That's how a virus starts. Mm-hmm. Um, so opening the email is probably not enough. Probably okay. You know, that's why, let's just say you're an Outlook user. Outlook default turns off the ability to show you content. You know, it takes away, you know, opening up the page and doing stuff really pretty in email. You see it. It says at the top, hey, click here for more you know, Outlook. By default, Microsoft said, we'll just turn that off. Then somebody like me, I turn it on because when I click, I want to save a click. I want to see it all right there. That's how it starts, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, And you have to pay attention. Um, Typically, your antivirus uh, protects, tries to protect you when you run a program. It says, ooh, I don't understand this. Maybe not. And then hopefully, the administrator to your computer, if it's home, hopefully you don't make yourself the administrator. You make yourself a user. And then if you want to do something you have to sign in as the administrator. Most people don't. Yeah, I'm at home. I'll just make myself the administrator. Does it inherently, and next thing you know, you got numbers on the front of your screen. Says call here, and your tax files, pictures of your kids, grandkids, whatever it may be, are gone. Is it is it just me, or did he just sound like the teacher from Charlie Brown? <laughs> what administrator? Not admin. I I have a computer. I have no right. idea. So. Probably you, your user that you sign into, you are an administrator. You have heightened privileges. The the best thing in the world for everybody is to not keep that, keep those set of credentials aside, but create yourself a restricted user so that when you're surfing the Internet, somebody sends you something, you don't step in it when you didn't mean to. Yeah, I don't I don't want that kind of power. I'm just throwing that out there. <laughs> yeah. Hey, let me ask you this. Is it is an Apple product, I mean, is it is it safer as far as, because they say viruses can't get into Apple, or I'd heard somewhere it's diff, more difficult. Is that better than like a, uh, a Microsoft-based product? No, we, Bill Gates is listening. I'm about to get in trouble, right? But uh, <laughs> the industry, and inherently, the Apple platform is much more restrictive. So to that point, it is has less opportunity to be infected. It, it They do. Um, at home, I'm an Apple user. Works great. I love it. In the corporate environment, Apple really isn't designed for that. If you bring it over to the Microsoft world, that's the standard in, in business today because of the the ability to work with so many different platforms and the ability to develop. So that's why when you leave the home and you get in it, it becomes problematic. It, it I'm telling you, for all of the effort we spend to do good, we spend that much effort trying to ensure nobody does bad. Any idea how many people are out there trying to do what you're describing in terms of doing no. harm? Is this a small percentage of the globe, or is like half the world sitting around going, how do I get money out of this person? No, I think it's small percentage, but extremely talented and gifted. Ext- those people 
if you could turn them to the the other side, right? Away from the dark side. Correct. They're, they're, what but, countries are the worst? But I, well, where do you, where are you most concerned? Uh, you, you see it. You see it from the Middle East for sure. Uh, a lot of it out of the China region comes. That we don't even allow it. It just gets turned. It can't even get here. Uh, but it's everywhere, right? So it follows war. You know, obviously. 50 years ago it was physical now it's as much intellectual as it is physical so it's if it's just it's a nuisance right it's not like your stuff at home where they'd love to get your social security number or your credit card number the leg of the government i work for there's nothing there to get it's for pure pleasure saying we created havoc and hopefully they'll pay to undo the havoc and mm -hmm. take anything I would think that most people out there don't have your knowledge and expertise of IT. So why aren't more people getting shaken down by these, hey, you're locked up, send us money? Orders? Oh, I, I think there's a lot more than you hear about. I think there's a lot of people that, I think it happens all the time in the home arena. They just throw it out and start over. I think it happens a lot. So they don't pay, they just get rid of That's their right. stuff, right? Why? Right. I mean, is there any idea what percentage of the population has been affected by this? No, I don't follow it that close. I, one of our security guys could probably throw a number out real quick. He's probably shaking his head going, quit talking, go home, get back to work. <laughs> but um, it, it is much larger than people anticipate because they just start over. Right now, it's just 10 years worth of pictures or eh, it's just that QuickBooks file. They're not going to pay. Oh, yeah, dollars. I mean, I'm not going to pay. I just spent all my money on a, a new car warranty that a, a very kind <laughs> gentleman from India just yes. called and provided me right. with. He has your best interest at in heart. <laughs> yes, yes. Always. I always tell him I've got a Lamborghini and a Ferrari. Which one is better for the used car warranty? I just say that's great. I've got 719,000 miles on my car. Well, what's the cost? <laughs> that's what I do, too. <laughs> Yeah, Gary, I would imagine, Gary, that the uh, the county has to contract out to various uh, companies to come in and, and consult with you and figure out protective measures so that your data, the information in there is not hacked. Right. Uh, is that a pretty significant expense for the county budget? The s security is a very large expense for the county budget. Um, there's a good thing is the, the federal government recognized that small government entities like ourselves, there was opportunity to provide, you know, some of the tools and resources that they have access to at that level. So they've, they've spun off an organization that gives us the opportunity to reach into the, the knowledge base that they have and they kind of share. Uh, it, it's not near the level that they have access to, but it is extremely effective for us and gives us the ability to, to get into knowledge sets that fortune 500 people pay millions of dollars for companies that obviously small local county city governments can't do and even at the state level so yes uh it's a big effort uh it's not even though we do all the work in-house we have contractual obligations that help you know uh security operation centers that monitor our network that have a heartbeat there's actually people and devices that look at everything we do so they shouldn't be doing that. We'll get an email. You better go check that out. But, yeah, it's it's expensive. I would mean, imagine because some of these nefarious actors are state actors. Correct. Right? As you said, they're probably sponsored by the, the governments they of are. the Middle East, and, and we know Russia and right. China and that sort of thing. Uh, is there help from, from Washington in terms of uh, funding, grants, support there financially to help local governments like ours? There is. And typically that goes through some of these other agencies that we can get to. Yes, there is. And we've taken advantage of that for years. And any time the government can work together, small and large, it's to the benefit of everyone, both financially and intellectually. So not only do you have uh, perhaps the expertise uh, at the federal level where they're sharing information, but you also have the money. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Which and is, it is all our money. So. Well, exactly. And I, I'd like to know that uh, those are tax dollars that are spent wisely. We work very hard to ensure that happens. I mean, it, the buzz of security. We, I could spend every penny of our budget on security. I just could, mm -hmm. right? It would go that fast. But it's important to prioritize, get it done right, get it done efficiently and effective. And there's no wood, and I'm not knocking because it makes the microphone mad, but Rob. But, uh, <laughs> yes, sir. We, uh, Please do that. We, we do. We work really hard. Nobody nobody is safe. It will happen. Again, it's how you deal with it and how you recover once it does happen. 
Gary, a question from our uh, Facebook community. Uh, I think it was from Jeff who said, I always get computer viruses, but never on my phone. What's the difference? It's the operating system, right? So the phone operating systems historically aren't as open as what the, the computing operating systems are. Um, the Android and Apple arenas, I can tell you from a developing standpoint, if we do some developing, to develop to the standards and put something in the Apple store to doing the same thing and putting in the Android store is like driving his Ferrari and my Pinto. Uh, no comparison. I can put something bad in the Google Play store. Pretty simple. You probably wouldn't want to download it because it came from Sexy Lisa at Hotmail.com. I thought it was really Lusty out. Lisa. Right. And then <laughs> Sexy Lisa's her sister. <laughs> That's right. Uh, or in the Apple Store. Mm -hmm. So, Well, why isn't Android tighter in their security than Apple? It's just the nature of the beast and how they do their business. I mean, it's just their business policies and procedures, how they do it. It's been that way since the day they started. It's gotten harder. In the beginning, man, you could throw something up in the, in the Android Store, Play Store, <laughs> very easily. Uh, we did some apps. We had some apps that opened gates and things around the complexes that were really cool. And we said, wow, iPhone started to get popular. Well, let's do that for the iPhones. It was like Cinderella's castle. You couldn't get in. So well, That's comforting. Yeah. Right. Uh, Gary, uh, what advice do you give to our listeners, our viewers out there right now to uh, avoid becoming a victim of ransomware or viruses, period, anyway? So home users, uh, ask someone, ask your grandkids. They'll know. Uh, create an account for yourself that is not administrative. Work with that account daily. Set that administrative account aside uh, and email. Uh, if it didn't come from, or if it did come from Lusty Lisa, delete it. But uh, uh, Uncle Rob, Dad Rob's not going to send you an email and say, I'm at Target. I need you to send me $500. Read that stuff. My, my daughter would, by the way. That would, <laughs> she would send a text or an email. I'm at Target. Please yeah. send me $500. Right? Yeah. Anyone but Bodwell's daughter <laughs> sends you that email. <laughs> Don't respond. Yeah. Be careful with it. It is. It, they are very creative. Uh, you know, it'll say from Alan Davis and it was not and it, they're really good I mean and pay attention to the language language the barrier they'll misspell stuff like that but man some of today's spam with their phishing efforts it's it's tight huh yeah very uh, Gary thank you very much appreciate you coming in you're welcome hope you didn't cause any stress for those in your office I will find out right. thank you <laughs> appreciate it sure thank you